Amen. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Truly, this is the day that the Lord has made. We rejoice and we are glad in it. We welcome you, my brothers and sisters, to the pit stop. Amen. Our Wednesday noonday worship experience. We're glad that you tuned in to join us. Amen. Because truly, God has a blessing in store for for you this day. If you would, join with me as we invoke the presence of our almighty God in this worship experience, wherever we are. God, we bless you. We thank you. We thank you, God, that you, uh, for, for first of all, for life, for health, for strength, and the fact, God, that you woke us up this morning and you enabled us, Lord, to have the activities of our limbs, to be in our right mind. Matter of fact, the frame of mind that desired God to want to worship you in spirit and in truth. We thank you, Lord God. We thank you for these, my brothers and sisters who have tuned in and who are tuning in, Lord God, to receive a word from you this day. Pray, Lord God, that you would be with us, Lord God. We pray for a fresh anointing of your Holy Spirit, that all that is said and done Lord God, will be done, Lord God, uh, to edify the body and the greater good that you will receive glory, honor, and praise. Bless God all that we are doing bound to pray for, God. We thank you for who you are in our lives. Be with us, God, is our prayer. In the name of Jesus, we ask it all. Amen. There's a great hymn of the church. What a fellowship, what a joy divine, leaning on the everlasting arms. Uh, what a blessing it's, what a peace in mind, leaning on the everlasting arms. Join with me uh, as we shall sing this great hymn of praise together. Amen. Savior, leaning on the air. 
praise God that uh, we are able, amen, to lean on the everlasting arms of our Savior. A amen. Amen. At this time, we, we ask you to, uh, we invite you to join with us as we shall share in our scripture reading for this morning. Uh, uh, Ezekiel, the 37th chapter, uh, beginning at verse 1 and concluding at verse 14. Again, that's Ezekiel chapter 37, uh, verses 1 through 14. Uh, here at, uh, we'll ask Elder Townsend if she would share in the reading of our, our scripture. Ezekiel 37, 1, I'll be from the New Living Translation. The Lord took hold of me, and I was carried away by the Spirit of the Lord to a bathroom. He led me all around among the bones that covered the valley. They were scattered everywhere across the ground and Right then he asked me, Son of man, can these bones become living people again? Oh, sovereign Lord, I replied, the bones was the answer to that. Then he said to me, Speak a prophetic message to these bones and say, Dry bones, listen to the word of the Lord. This is what the sovereign Lord says. Look, I am going to breath into you and make you live again. I will put flesh and muscles on you and cover you with skin. I will put breath into you and you will come to life. Then you will know that I am the Lord. So I spoke this message just as he told me. Suddenly as I spoke, there was a rattling noise all across the valley. The bones of each body came together and attached themselves as complete skeletons. Then, as I watched, the muscles and flesh formed over the bones, then skin formed to cover their bodies, but they still had no breath in them. Then he said to me, Speak a prophetic message to the wind, son of man. Speak a prophetic message and say, This is what the sovereign Lord says. Come, O breath from the four winds, breathe into these dead bodies so they may live again so i spoke the message as he commanded me and breath came into their bodies and they they all came to life and stood up on their feet a great army then he said to me son of man these bones represent the people of israel they are saying we have become old dry bones all hope is gone our nation is finished therefore the prophecy to them and say this is what the sovereign lord says oh my people i will open up your graves of exile and cause you to rise then i will bring you back to the land of israel when this happens oh my people you will know that i am the lord and verse 14 i will put my spirit in you and you will live again and return home to your own land then you will know that i the lord have spoken and i have done what i said yes the lord has spoken the word of god for his people amen thank you elder Chalzen, for our scripture lesson this morning. I asked Deaconess Donna if she would uh, take us to the throne of grace. Amen. Our Father and our God, we come to bow down heads and bring our hearts, Lord God, just to say thank you, Lord God. Thank you. We thank you, Lord God, that I beg the not of our cooling board and be the good to sheep to come our winding chains. But it was because of your grace and your mercy, Lord, that you have things for us to do. You have prayers for us to pray. You have people for us to touch, Lord God. Let a dying girl know that Jesus Christ is the only way to get to, to where we can have life and have it more abundant. Father God, we are coming on this new day, fill up, Lord God. 
saying, Lord God, we are praying for all of those that we are duty to bounty to pray for. We're praying for all of those that are bereaved at this present moment, Lord God. Some that have lost their lives to COVID, but then, Lord God, those whom you said your labor has not been in vain, cross over the chilly Jordan and come on home where I can give you peace and rest. We thank you, Lord God, for this invitation you have given our pastor, that we can get a fill up in the middle of the week, Lord God, because trials come dark on every hand, and we do not understand. But Lord God, we know that as long as we keep our hands in your hands, Father God, you will continue to lead and guide as only you would have us to do. Pray right now, Lord God, for the preacher that is going to come and bring to us the breath of life. For the place down deep into his spirit, God, they will go forth that it will be all on ears and hearts and minds that we can let a dying world know that you are the way, the truth, and the life. Continue to bless them, Lord God, touch him from the top of his head to the soles of his feet. Continue to burn deep within his spirit, Lord God. Keep all fire to preach Jesus. That's all we need to know in these times and the days that are yet to come. We have to learn preach Jesus. So, Lord God, be within this service on this day. Bless us only you can bless us. And we will be so ever and careful to give you all the glory, honor, and praise to you in your holy and precious name. We ask the blessing and the only name that can save, and that is Jesus Christ our Lord. Our soul says, Amen. 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 Join us uh, as we prepare our hearts to receive what uh, saith the Lord on this day uh, as we lift a, a, a great hymn of the church. Uh, oh, how I love Jesus. There is a name I, I love to hear. I love to sing its worth. It sounds like music in my ear. The sweetest name on earth.
Bless God today uh, to be able to share with you. Amen. Truly, God has a word 
for us this morning. Again, join us in this 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 uh, uh, prophetical book of Ezekiel, this, the 37th uh, chapter, familiar passage of scripture. The Lord led it to me again this week as uh, as we journey towards Pentecost. Amen. Amen. On on Sunday we 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 shared uh, the ascension of Jesus. We celebrated the ascension of Jesus into to heaven and. And, and now we move towards Pentecost, which we will celebrate on Sunday. But we take a pit stop here this, this Wednesday uh, in this 37th chapter of uh, the book of Ezekiel. Uh, let's lay, I want to lay anchor at verse 11. It reads, Then said, he said to me, Son of man, can these, man, son of man, these bones, they represent the people of Israel. They are saying, we have become old, dry bones, and all hope is gone. Our nation is finished. Therefore, God says, prophesy to them and say, this is what the sovereign Lord says. Oh, my people, I will open your graves of exile and cause you to rise again. Then I will bring you back to the land of Israel. When this happens, O oh my people, you will know that I am the Lord. I will put my spirit in you and you will live again and return home to your own land. Then you will know that I, the Lord, have spoken and I have done what I said. Yes, the Lord has spoken. I, I want to talk to to you just a few minutes this 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 early afternoon from the subject as we continue to move faith forward from the subject hope for this valley of bones. Hope from this for this valley of bones. Uh, my brothers and sisters, when I when I look at our nation uh, on a daily basis, my my my, my heart breaks. Uh, even just. In, in the news recently, you know, the, the, the story of one of another one of our black brothers who 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 died or murdered, if you will, at the hands of 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 of, of the authorities. My, 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 my heart breaks. My heart breaks when I look uh, at, at so many people, young and old, who are lost and don't know Christ. My heart breaks when, when, when I see so many young and old who are outside of the ark of safety, people who are alive by all means physically, but who are spiritually dead because they have no connection to the living, life-changing, life-giving God that we serve. And, and it's evidenced every day by what we see. Every day we see the lack of love for one another. We, we see greed, hate, and selfishness. And my prayer is every day that the Lord would quicken all of our spirits and that the Lord would wake us up and that the Lord would draw us nearer to him because God is able not only to give hope, but he's able to restore life where life is gone. He's able to restore purpose, and he's able uh, to restore all that has been lost in our lives. And really, that's what we find in this text. That's what this, this text really is, is about. Our, our text this morning is a familiar story, and as it opens, it opens with the prophet Ezekiel uh, telling us of a divine experience uh, that he he has had with God. Ezekiel says in these opening verses that the hand of the Lord uh, was upon him and that it brought him out in the spirit of the Lord. And it was the, uh, a supernatural encounter uh, that he explains. He explains that God's hand took hold of Ezekiel and lifted him above his everyday existence outside his normal routine and began 
beyond his normal senses. What he experienced here, he explained, it, it was a vision, a, a vision that reflected the reality of the human condition that even exists in 2020. The prophet here says, the hand of God carried me in the spirit and set me down in the midst of a valley uh, that was full of bones. Ezekiel says, here that I, 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 I was able to glance all around me. I, I was able to, to, to take a look at this broad valley where the Lord placed me and I saw that it was full of bones and not just piles of bones here and there, but it was a valley that was full of bones. And Ezekiel here, church, was given a tour of, of this strange and gruesome sight. He says the Lord allowed him to, to, to have a careful inspection of this vast accumulation of human skeletal remains. Ezekiel says here, the Lord led me all around them. And as I looked at what I saw, I saw that there was a lot of them and I saw that they were all dry. But can I tell you, church, Ezekiel said, but God had, had a particular command to give Ezekiel in regard to these parts, these brittle bones. And he would also provide him with quite a detailed explanation about this valley of bones. But first, God had a probing question for Ezekiel. And matter of fact, it's really a, pro a probing question for all of us today. The Lord asked Ezekiel, he said, son of man, can these bones live? Ezekiel, he had just surveyed this bizarre scene and, and he could not escape the conclusion that life and that vitality were non-existent in these bones. And the question is, uh, could they be restored? Uh, the question is, could they uh, uh, live again? Could there be life again where life had totally departed? As a matter of fact, can strength, can movement, can energy, can awareness, can responsiveness somehow reappear to those who were utterly dead and to those bodies that have decayed now lifeless uh, in such a way? Is it possible that such a miracle could take place? Lord have mercy. And so God here wanted to hear Ezekiel's response. Just as he wants us, he wants you and I to carefully assess uh, the, the true potential of whatever difficult situation that lies before us. Because I want to suggest that we are all right now living in the midst of a valley that's full of dry bones. Help me, Holy Ghost. God here is challenging Ezekiel to carefully evaluate the situation that was before him uh, and he required a response so of course uh, Ezekiel gave God one look at what Ezekiel says Ezekiel says Lord God, you 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 asked me, can these bones live? But 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 my only response is, Lord, I don't know, but you know. Ezekiel Church, he, he's no fool. He he realizes that he did not possess the answer to God's question, and he confesses here, Lord, this thing is bigger than me. Uh, church, how, how how often do we offer God? our human assessment of a problem along with our human solution to the problem. Help me, Holy Ghost. But God here says, I mean, but Ezekiel says, look, God, I, I I don't know, but 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 I do know one thing. I know you know. <laughs> Is such a miracle possible? 
Ezekiel recognized uh, 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 impossibly when when he the impossibilities when he saw what he saw, but he did not forget that God, our God, is a God of impossibilities. That's a word for somebody this morning. Yeah, the God that we serve, no matter how bleak, no matter how dark what goes on in your life, no matter how how how, how bad things might seem, even in our city, in our nation, and even in this pandemic that we are experiencing, our God is a God of impossibilities. Now, watch this. Ezekiel, first of all, uh, must have sensed uh, already uh, who these bones represented, but even if he had not, even if he had no clue, God here would make it clear to him uh, as to who these, this, this valley of bones were. And God tells him, he says, son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. And this was a devastating reality that God's people, y'all hear what I'm saying, that God's people were nothing more now than a valley full of wretched bones. This was an accurate depiction of their spiritual condition. Y'all, listen to me. I say it was an accurate uh, a, a depiction of their spiritual condition. Condition. This was the reality now that existed among God's people. And church, uh, thank you, Lord, for dropping it in my spirit. You, you got to, we've got to be careful. A- amen. Because even we we are we, we, we are connected to Christ we have to be uh, careful that we don't allow our bones to become dry Lord have mercy yeah we've got to be we got we got to make sure that we maintain our connection to the to the true giver of life to the true vine to the one who gives and and sustains life because church what would it what would you and the question I want to ask us this morning is, is what would you and I see today if God were to grant us this personal vision of the true reality of our own spiritual condition? Help me somebody. Uh, not, not even our own, but the condition, uh, the spiritual condition of our family, uh, the spiritual condition of, 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 of our church, the spiritual condition of our city, of our nation. What exactly would that picture be? What, what would our valley be filled with? Ezekiel here did not have to wonder. God gave him a clear image, and it showed that spiritually speaking, God, the, God's people were missing something very critical in their life. Lord have mercy. The whole house of Israel was this way. The entire nation was this way. They were all dead and dry. God's people, I say, were missing something very critical. Their, their, their miserable inner condition was just as bleak as their outward circumstances. That that's why we have to always maintain our connection to Christ. Yeah, and you, and, and as I told you before, you don't have to be in a church house to be connected. No, oh, no, 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 yeah, I, yeah, I, I, I don't have to be at 2409 to be connected, amen, God, you know, uh, not, not, not only to be connected to the saints, but, but to be connected even to our, our God, who is our life giver, yeah, yeah, when I wake up in the morning, yeah, I, I, I gotta learn to call on him, when, when, when I, when I go throughout my day, I, I gotta maintain that vital connection by having a little talk with Jesus every, every now and then as I go throughout my day. Every now and then throughout the day, I got to open up my word so that I can I can get some divine revelation that God wants to impart in me every day. Yeah, all day. Matter of fact, that's what the Bible says. You, you know, I got to be able to meditate you know, on, 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 on his word day and night. Yeah, yeah. You know, so, so, so that's how we maintain, you, you know, the vitality of our spirits because if you're not careful it's easy to get disconnected 
and then your bones began to dry. Here for Ezekiel, in that valley of dried up bones, uh, the moment for action had come. God was going to, hear me, hear me, God was going to perform a miracle. I said God was going to perform a miracle and he was going to use Ezekiel to accomplish it. That's a word for us this morning. God, 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 uh, prophetically speaking, God is going to perform a miracle and God is going to use some of you to perform it. Help me, Holy Ghost. Uh, here, Ezekiel, here, Ezekiel, uh, uh, God, God uses Ezekiel uh, to, to, to accomplish uh, what uh, this miracle that he's looking. God was simply going to speak speak a word. Uh, he was going to speak a word. Uh, how many know that God's word is a life-giving word? Yeah, his word is a living and an active word that's sharper than a two-edged sword. His word pierces deeply into the uttermost delineations of the soul and spirits and of the joints and marrow and, 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 uh, and to move on our hearts. And God was going to hear, speak a word through his prophet. And can I tell you this morning, today in America, God is speaking right now. God is speak. God has been speaking. But the question is, a whole lot of us ain't been listening. God has been speaking every day since this pandemic started, and God is still speaking. And can I tell you also that God wants to speak through you and I who are his messengers. God today told me to tell you that he wants us to go and to speak. Speak a word to folk who are depressed. He wants us to go and encourage somebody who has been defeated. To inspire folk who ha have been uninspired. He wants us to go and give a prophetic word of restoration to folk who are already spiritually dead. Because that word of God will revive their soul. He wants us to preach hope to folk where hope has gone. And to, to give encouragement that will lift up, bow down heads. He wants us to preach life because his word is life. Yeah, his words give life. That's why the songwriter declared, sing them over to me again. The wonderful words of life. Yeah, he wants us to preach love in a city and a nation and in neighborhoods where love seems to be in short supply or gone at all. You know, he wants us to preach salvation and healing to those who are lost and and on their way to hell. So here, God, God, God tells Ezekiel, look, he says, Ezekiel, go, go and prophesy. It's, it's right there. Go, go and prophesy over these bones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some of y'all need to go outside, stand on your stoop, and prophesy over your neighborhood. Prophesy over them brothers and sisters standing on the corner. Yeah, yeah. That's what he tells Ezekiel. Prophesy over these bones and say to them, "Oh, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord." And he gave Ezekiel. Watch this. He gave Ezekiel a promise to announce for all of God's people. He says, thus saith the Lord to these bones, behold, I will cause breath to enter you and you shall live again. I feel somebody ought to be getting happy right there. Yeah. I, 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 he says, I will lay sinews uh, upon you and I will cause flesh to come upon you and cover you with skin and, uh, and put breath in you and you shall live and you shall know that I am the Lord. In other words, God was promising absolutely everything that these bones needed to become living and active beings once again. First and most importantly, he promised them life-sustaining breath. He promised them, yeah, everything. These bones would be completely restored into living, breathing, active creatures and in their knowledge of the Lord. Also, he was going to prove the answer uh, to the question he asked Ezekiel uh, when he started, can these bones live? That's what God asked Ezekiel. Now he was going to prove and to demonstrate the answer. So Ezekiel, uh, look at the text. He did exactly what he was told. He went out and he prophesied as 
he was commanded. And he spoke to these bones and gave them God's message. And God was faithful to his promise. Now, let me say that again. He did what the Lord told him to do. And God was faithful to what he had promised. If you go out and share the good news of Christ with somebody else, God is going to be faithful to what God promised. God, God, God's going to save somebody. God's going to uh, redirect somebody. God's going to lift somebody because he's just that kind of God. God, 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 God told Ezekiel, yeah, 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 uh, go, go, go prophesy. And when he did it, uh, 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 God kept his promise. Because you see what Ezekiel says. See, Ezekiel says that when, when, when I went out and did what, what God said do, when I went out and prophesied, all of a sudden there was a sound and, 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 and there was a rattling and, and, and bones started to come together. And, 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 and here he noticed at God's command where there had been no, where there had been all of this disconnection and where there had been chaos, now there was suddenly order and shape and framework. And Ezekiel said, I looked and behold, Lord have mercy. The bones started coming together. Flesh started becoming on them. They began to get covered with skin. And from the inside out, these skeletons were transformed from, into full form human bodies all through the medium of God's word. Lord have mercy. Yet Ezekiel, watch this. Yet Ezekiel Ezekiel says, I noticed something though. He says, I noticed that they were still missing something. Ezekiel says that there was no breath in them. God had, God, God had promised breath, but yet there was none. Uh, they, 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 I, I see bodies now. I see form, but, but still there is no actual life. And so God speaks to Ezekiel again. <laughs> I, 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 that's a good word. I, I love God. God will always talk to you some more. God speaks to Ezekiel again and tells him, look, prophesy unto the wind. And say to the wind, thus saith the Lord, come from the four corners, O breath, and breathe upon these slain that they may live again. And you know, and you know what happened once again. You got to be obedient to what God tells you. The Bible says once again, the prophet obeyed and prophesied as God commanded him. And once again, when he did what God told him to do, once again, God was faithful to his word. The Bible says, and breath came unto the bodies, and they lived and stood on their feet, uh, uh, an exceedingly great army. Where Here where Ezekiel had before seen a valley full of wasted, wretched bones, now he looked upon the awesome sight of a vast, mighty host of living breathing soldiers ready for battle for the Lord. Well, my brothers and sisters, that little story, what I'm trying to tell you all today is that no matter where you are in life, God is not only able to give you hope, but he's able to go beyond hope. He's able to restore you. God is, the God I serve is able to resurrect dead things. Matter of fact, if you don't believe me, just look at the tomb on Sunday morning because he got up. Uh, he, he gave us the ability also to rise from our dead situations, our dead lives. God is able not only to resurrect you, but he's able to give meaning for your life and purpose to your life. He's able to give hope and faith to know that whatever you need, God, whatever you're lacking now, God will provide. Matter of fact, because God is able to make ways out of no ways, He's able to work miracles where, where everything seems to be impossible. He's able to open doors. Okay, matter of fact, he's able to sober folk up who've been drunk forever. He's able to take the taste of, 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 of addiction out of your mouth. And I stopped by today to tell somebody that God has got a supernatural turnaround for your life. 
He's got a resurrection, a restoration, and a spiritual renewal for you. No matter how dry your spirit life might be, no matter how hopeless you might have, uh, things in your life may have seen, the word today is that your bones <laughs> can, can live again. You can thrive again. You can rejoice again because God is extending even today right now grace and mercy to all who will receive. Amen. A miracle of supernatural renewal in a place where all hope has been discarded. God has got a miracle waiting on you. God, we bless you and we thank you. I say, God, we thank you. We thank you for, for, for your word. We thank you for for, for, for opening it up to us today to know, God, that, that no matter how down, no matter how, 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 how dead or how, how non-existent, Lord God, how low you are able, Lord, to revive our souls again. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord God, that you're able to renew strength. Thank you that you're able to renew joy. You're able to renew hope. You're able to renew life. Thank you, Lord God, that you're able even to give us a brand new start. Even, God, when we think we should be cast away, thrown out, thank you, Lord God, that you have not, God, <laughs> kicked us to the curb. You have not put us in the... Tr thank you, Lord God, that you offer us all, even today, Lord God, uh, uh, not a second chance, but another chance. We thank you, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, for your word. We thank you for your sacrifice the sacrifice of your son Jesus who made it all possible we thank you Lord God that he went to Calvary's cross and because he died and because he got up from the grave we too are victorious because of Christ so God we thank you we ask God that you would bless all who are tuned in today we pray Lord God that you would, would, would draw all Lord God nearer Lord those who don't know you God we pray Lord God even now by the power of your spirit God that as your word has gone forth that it will accomplish what God you you declare for it to accomplish Lord God that Lord those who don't know you in the pardon of their sins God will will, 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 will be moved God Lord to accept you we thank you that healing and restoration is available this day and today's a good day to get saved today is a good day to enter into a, a new relationship with you so God bless God is our prayer we thank you Lord God for, 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 for how you continue to move in all of our lives Lord God even through this pandemic Lord God we thank you Lord God for how you continue to keep your arms wrapped around your children Lord God, we pray, Lord God, for those who have been impacted. We pray, Lord God, for those who have suffered loss, those, Lord God, who are in hospital beds even now, those who are on respirators. Lord God, we pray for your mighty divine healing. Bless. We lift up Sister Artis to you right now in the name of Jesus, God. You know where she is and what she's facing even now, God. But we know, God, that you are a healer, God. You're a doctor who's never lost a patient. So, God, we lift her up to you now in the name of Jesus. We lift up, God, the families of those. Lord God, even during this pandemic, they have lost loved ones because of COVID. Lord, who have lost loved ones, Lord God, for other reasons. God, we pray for comfort. We lift up the, 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 the Coroma family, God, our missionary, God, in Sierra Leone. We lift up her and her, fam her family, God. Uh, we, we lift up, God, the, uh, the Parks family, God, Sister, Sister Donna, in, in, in the name of Jesus. God, we lift up the Richardson family, God. We lift up the Johnson family. We lift up the Anderson family, the Robinson family the King family, God. We lift up the Gowdy family, God. We thank you, God, that you're able, Lord, to comfort. You're able to dry every weeping eye. You're able, Lord God, to give joy where there is sadness. We lift up, God, uh, 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 brother, brother, brother Chris, God, slave. We lift up, brother, uh, 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 the Rose family. We lift up the, uh, the Sherrod family. We lift up the Broaddus family, God, the Durham family. We lift up the, uh, the Wood family in the name of Jesus. 
continue to bless my sister Miller, God, in the name of Jesus. Touch them lungs in the name of Jesus. Bless Brother Willie Kelly, God, you know what, what he's dealing with. Bless Brother Ghoul, God, in the name of Jesus. Bless, bless uh, uh, Dexter Jernigan, uh, Tyrone Johnson, God, continue to bless God. Uh, uh, sister Margaret Brown, Sister Deborah Wallace, Sister Charlene Williams, Cornelius Presley, God, in the name of Jesus, we lift up the Hunt family that you'll continue to strengthen it and comfort them. Uh, the, the Costa family, God, in the name of Jesus. Bless the Harrell family, God, in the, the, my Jones family, God, in the name of Jesus. Bless God all that I'm doing, bound to pray for. Lord, there's a lot of names on our list, but we thank you, Lord God, that even, even though I, don't, I, I can't call all of them, you know about where every last one of us are. Even unconfessed uh, cares, unconfessed concerns. God, you know what's down in our hearts. You know the challenges that we face. You know the difficulties, the difficulties that we have, and you are able. So God, meet our needs right now in the name of Jesus. Bless our nation. Bless our world. Bless our leaders, God. Uh, help them, God, even now as they attempt to make the deci uh, decisions, God, that will impact, Lord God, lives as, as, it, as it, it pertains to opening up, God, states and cities, God. God, we pray, Lord, that, that you will help lead, direct, and guide them to make informed, well decisions in the name of Jesus. Lord God, we thank you. Bless God is our prayer, God. Keep us, God, and we shall be kept. And God, we'll be, we'll be ever so grateful to continue, God, to give you praise, to continue to give you glory, and to continue to give you honor. We thank you, God. Bless us is our prayer. In Jesus' name, we ask it all. Amen. Amen. God bless you, my brothers and sisters. We have done as we have been commanded, yet there is still much, much, much more to do. As you have been able to worship with us virtually, amen, you're still able to worship us, uh, worship with us through giving, amen. Uh, listed there is our Easy Tide app. Feel free, you are, you are able to give. Uh, just log on, a amen, and give. Also, we, we invite you to uh, continue to join with us uh, uh, as, as, as we commune in prayer. Amen. Tomorrow morning at 6 a.m., amen. You see listed there our, our new prayer call uh, number, uh, amen. Uh, so please uh, take note, take it down, a amen, and join us at 6 a.m. tomorrow, amen. Then on, on Sunday, join us, amen, at 11 a.m. via Facebook Live, a amen. Uh, as we gather together to worship our God in spirit and in truth. Amen. To God be the glory for the great things that he has done and that he continues to do. A amen. Uh, we, we will uh, uh, be celebrating the life of, of, of Sister Frances Gowdy uh, on uh, June the 2nd. I'll, I'll give you more information uh, on, on on this coming uh, Sunday, uh, and and, uh, and we'll shoot it out, uh, and we'll be celebrating the life of Brother Lorenzo King on June the eighth. So we want to keep uh, those families uh, in, in prayer uh, as 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 we celebrate those lives during this 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 time of of pandemic, which makes it a challenge uh, for us all. A a a amen. So I want to encourage you today, as 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 we go our our, our separate ways, that uh, that you get on the phone, a amen. That you get online, you get on social media, and that you encourage somebody in the Lord, a amen. That that you make a point today to be intentional with your witness, make a point today to be intentional with sharing the good news of the gospel, to encourage somebody, a a amen, in the Lord today, a amen. What God, the work of the church, and what God is doing in all of our lives doesn't cease because we are not in the building. A amen. We have to continue to be God's light in this world of darkness, pointing folk to Christ Jesus. Amen. So God bless you. May heaven smile upon you until we meet again. May his peace be with you. Amen. Amen. <laughs>